Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, kita berjumpa lagi pada kali ini. Untuk um, syarahan kali ini, saya akan berkongsi dengan uh, para pelajar uh, berkenaan satu lagi uh, topik yang amat penting uh, bagi pelajar yang uh, mendalami Uh, bidang pemeliharaan bangunan warisan eh, yang mana uh, tajuk uh, syarahan pada kali ini adalah uh, berkaitan dengan uh, guidelines for heritage building conservation eh, in Malaysia of course. Okey, um, seterusnya adalah um, berkenaan dengan okay, apakah uh, lebih dahulu saya ingin uh, memberi sedikit penerangan uh, berkenaan dengan uh, jabatan eh, yang uh, bertanggungjawab uh, terhadap uh, perkara-perkara yang berkaitan dengan pemeliharaan bangunan warisan di Malaysia which is the, Net, the Department of National Heritage atau lebih dikenali sebagai uh, Jabatan Warisan Negara short formnya adalah JWN. Okay, the National Heritage Department Uh, actually has been established eh, on 1st March 2006 uh, which is actually uh, the formation of the department is in line uh, with the enforcement of the Act 645 uh, which is the Heritage National Act uh, which has been established in 2005. So uh, the National Heritage Act 2005 actually is to Uh, provide registry for heritage and national heritage. So as you know, uh, there are two category of um, building that can be gazetted under National Heritage Act, which categorized under two uh, category, which is heritage and national heritage. And the responsibility of the National Heritage Department is also to conserve Malaysian heritage and also to perform research. So uh, the National Heritage is not only um, responsible towards the heritage conservation project but they also uh, do a, many research related to the uh, heritage conservation in Malaysia. And the department um, also document and publish references related to heritage. And if you go to the department, actually, uh, you can find uh, so many uh, references uh, in a form of uh, books, uh, booklet. Uh, yeah, they they also have uh, their own journal, uh, and they have uh, a lot of pamphlets as well. And the National Heritage Department is to plan, implement, coordinate on promoting activities and awareness programs related to heritage and to establish networking of cooperation with other agencies and institutions, either it is local or international, pertaining to uh, heritage. Okay, in National Heritage Department, uh, there are few Uh, section or they call it as a division uh, which is the registration and enforcement division uh, which uh, actually this uh, division is responsible uh, towards uh, all the gazetting process all the registration process of either buildings or non uh, buildings uh, to the uh, national heritage department under national heritage act 2005. Then uh, the, under the National Heritage Department, they also have uh, a conservation division uh, which actually pre, uh, I, I am the uh, former director of this conservation division uh, from 2014 eh, 2018. So if you can see uh, the, there is me in the photo Eh, uh, checking the building during the conservation works and uh, this is me as well uh, presenting one of our uh, 
conservation project to the uh, the representative uh, from the Perak Palace. Okay, uh, so the conservation division actually is uh, responsible uh, towards any matters related to the building conservation in Malaysia. Then under the National Heritage Department, they also have uh, an archaeology division, an archaeology division, uh, which is responsible towards uh, any projects that related to archaeology uh, site. So if you can see from this slide, uh, this is the photo of the Bastion Victoria in Malacca uh, during uh, the excavation. And after that, uh, they decided to rebuild the fort, eh, the bastion. They call it the bastion. So if you go to uh, Malacca, now actually you can see uh, this uh, newly built bastion based on uh, the original bastion uh, following uh, the investigation done by the National Heritage Department. And this photo actually showing the uh, underwater archaeological uh, finds in Tanjung Tuan, Malacca. And so to find the archaeological uh, artifacts. And apart from the uh, building archaeological site, so under the National Heritage Department, they also have the Intangible Cultural Heritage Division, which uh, responsible towards uh, the, the gazettement of uh, any intangible uh, cultural heritage like language and literature, uh, performing arts, customs and traditions, uh, visual arts and living human treasure. Okay, uh, then apart from uh, the gazettement of the, our uh, local heritage or national heritage, uh, the department is also responsible toward World Heritage Listing, uh, which actually, if you uh, see, uh, we we are now have um, four uh, national heritage sites, uh, which has been inscribed under the UNESCO. So it, you can see from the photo uh, of from this slide. So we have uh, Gunung Mulu, uh, we have uh, Kinabalu, and we have uh, Lenggong Valley in Perak, and then we have uh, two cultural heritage sites, which is uh, Malacca and uh, Penang uh, or Georgetown City. So this World Heritage Listing actually is uh, based on the world significant, so they must have an outstanding universal value and the site must be uh, approved eh, as authentic, uh, they have, they must have an authenticity and integrity. Uh, they also uh, should have a legal protection under the uh, national government. And uh, the uh, one of the factor they have to contribute towards filling the gaps on the World Heritage List, meaning that the site must be unique uh, to our country uh, comparing to the other country. So you cannot, uh, I mean, the UNESCO will not inscribe a site which is uh, quite uh, similar to each other uh, because uh, the one that they uh, identify uh, before inscribing the site, so they, uh, they want to know what is the OUV or outstanding universal value of the site. Okay, so ini adalah ni heritage site Kinabalu, Gunung Mulun National Park. <coughs> Kinabalu di Sabah and this is Rawak, eh, historic cities of the Strait of Malacca which is uh, Malacca City and Penang City. Eh, uh, and then archaeological heritage of the Lenggong Valley in Lenggong Perak. Okay, uh, then the National Heritage Department uh, also responsible uh, in conducting training and awareness. Okay, so this photo showing uh, the National Heritage Department, the top National Heritage Department team with all the registered conservator during uh, the uh, 
uh, ceremony for them. And so uh, we, I mean, apart from the training and awareness, uh, the department also send their representative to be uh, like a uh, technical advisor uh, to other agency. So, uh, for example, this photo. So this is me. This is our uh, my trip actually uh, as a technical advisor to Sarawak Museum yeah, because Sarawak Museum actually they are uh, last time they they are preparing uh, towards the heritage conservation of uh, this uh, old Sarawak Museum building. Okay, so this is me also uh, with all the registered conservator uh, during the <coughs> ceremony and the majlis lah for wacana perkongsian ilmu uh, bersama conservator berdaftar in 2018. Okay, so uh, just showing you some photos of uh, the department uh, involvement uh, with the public. So this is uh, me also with uh, our former Prime Minister uh, during uh, Tinjauan eh, project, Rebo of Life uh, in Masjid Jamik, Kuala Lumpur. And <clears throat> this is uh, during uh, one of the meeting that the department had uh, for the <clears throat> revision uh, of the uh, National Heritage Act 2005. And this is uh, one of the uh, interview session with uh, RTM1 uh, on one of the program handled by the department. And this is me entertaining the uh, Sultan of Selangor during his visit to the newly conserved uh, Masjid uh, Alaidin in Banting. Okay, uh, then uh, the department also publish uh, many, many books uh, in uh, not only about buildings but also in intangible uh, heritage. So you can uh, get uh, all the books. Actually, it, it is uh, not for sale. So they just give it for free to the public in order to promote and to educate public on the heritage conservation in Malaysia. Okay, uh, then uh, we go uh, to the explanation of the National Heritage Act 2005. So the National Heritage Act 2005 is an act uh, to provide for the conservation and preservation of national heritage, uh, national uh, tangible and intangible cultural heritage, underwater cultural heritage, treasure truth and for related matters. Uh, so this act actually came into effect on 1st March 2006 and uh, it repealed the Antiquities Act 1976 and the Treasure Truth Act 1957. Uh, I'm sure uh, all of you, uh, you have your own uh, printed version of this National Heritage Act 2005. So uh, I hope that uh, you can flip through the National Heritage Act and look into the Act, uh, what is the uh, content of it. Okay, uh, the National Heritage Act is more coordinated and integrated approach towards the conservation and preservation of National Heritage Act because previously, before we have this National Heritage Act 2005, we only do uh, conservation works based on the uh, Antiquity Act 1976. But in Antiqui Antiqui Antiquity Act 2006, uh, 1976, it doesn't include anything uh, specifically uh, to the heritage building conservation because the Antiquity Act is actually is meant for artifacts in a museum. So, uh, so in National Heritage Act 2005, uh, it also include an identification and designation of buildings, monuments and sites with historical importance to be gazetted as historical zone and uh, 
it in, it also include a heritage register uh, wish to be established by the uh, department of national heritage <clears throat> okay we look at the category of uh, heritage uh, we in Malaysia, we categorize it into few category, which is heritage site, uh, which include buildings, monuments, archaeological site and natural sites, which has been shown in my uh, previous slide. And uh, for then we have heritage object, which is uh, tangible and intangible, uh, underwater cultural heritage, and we also have a living person or in uh, Malay, we call it as a uh, tokoh orang hidup. Eh? Uh, warisan uh, wakoh, eh? warisan uh, orang hidup. Okay, so uh, that, that actually makes our uh, act is uh, very unique comparing to other heritage act in other countries because we include this a category the living person and yeah, so uh, meaning that we can uh, register a person with uh, a traditional skill for example as a heritage person <clears throat> so the contents of the uh, national heritage act it has uh, many 16 parts yeah, or consists of many related section but uh, for our code, uh, BSR 603, since we are focusing more on the building conservation, so these are the parts that uh, touch or much related to the building. So what actually I want you to focus on, or if you flip through the National Heritage Act, uh, please uh, read through what actually include in part one, uh, part 6 and part 7 yeah, but this one offences uh, is uh, just to highlight on the penalty yeah, uh, imposed if there is anything uh, that uh, I mean the, the any party did uh, which actually give a bad impact to the heritage but um, just look at the part 7 which is under heritage site so this is uh, rather important for uh, for us to know which this section include the designation of heritage site, interim protection order, uh, dealings involving heritage site, conservation and preservation of heritage site, conservation area and conservation management plan. Okay, so under the National Heritage Register, so we have the heritage and we have the heritage site, underwater cultural heritage, heritage object, and we have the national heritage, and also we have a living person. While for the heritage status, as being mentioned earlier, yeah, I think I have explained this before during uh, our previous class, uh, the heritage actually can be uh, categorized into two which is the heritage and the national heritage which, at the, which actually this national heritage is at the higher level after the heritage the heritage will be declared by the heritage commissioner under the heritage act 2005 while the national heritage will be declared by the uh, minister uh, under section 67 act 645 and the uh, the national heritage is the building that uh, has been considered as uh, having a contribution to the formation of identity of a Malaysian. Okay, so the nomination as national heritage, how actually uh, one building can be nominated and gazetted as a national heritage. So the nomination can be, I mean, can come from any person. Uh, either it is uh, from individual, government, or agency, or NGO, uh, uh, etc. So this one uh, stated under section 68. So uh, which uh, said that any person may nominate to the minister in the prescribed form 
any natural heritage, tangible or intangible cultural heritage, living person or underwater cultural heritage to be declared as national heritage. So then after the nomination comes in, the department will look into it and um, so they will um, do a thorough study on that particular buildings and it, uh, I mean based on that uh, analysis and based on that study then only that particular building can be considered based on specific criteria uh, which has been which is stated in under section 67 act 645 so this is the criteria that uh, can be considered uh, before the department can uh, gazette any building as uh, heritage or national heritage so the building must have the historical importance uh, nation history good design or aesthetic characteristic scientific and technical innovation or achievement uh, the social or cultural association uh, the potential to educate for the scientific investigation uh, it has the importance in exhibiting, exhibiting a richness, diversity or unusual integration of features, the rarity or uniqueness, the representative as part of a class or type and any other matter. So it can be, I mean the building can be put under one or two criteria. Uh, so it, uh, it, it's not uh, that one building should have all the criteria. One or two criteria is enough. Uh, to consider the building as a heritage. So this is the uh, the chart showing the designation of heritage uh, site. Okay, what actually I want you to see from this uh, slide, the most important part, actually the consent of the state authority under section 30. Actually, uh, the Department of National Heritage, they can... Uh, do the gazettement. I mean, they can propose the gazettement, uh, but of course, uh, for buildings, uh, I mean, building is located in uh, each state of the country. And for example, if the department uh, wants to gazette a building uh, located in Perak, eh, so the department must uh, obtain a consent from the state government of Perak ataupun uh, pihak SUK lah di Perak so uh, the SUK uh, will look into the uh, proposal and they are the one actually who have the authority either to uh, give an approval or non-approval to that proposal so if the department uh, cannot get the approval from the state government, then the department actually cannot proceed with the gazettement. That is why if you go to the uh, JWN website, uh, you look into the uh, heritage and national heritage list and you will notice that uh, uh, there, there are uh, some uh, states in Malaysia which uh, do not have uh, do have do not have many uh, gazetted building. So that is because, uh, but in reality, actually they have so many heritage building. But then, uh, for example, I give you uh, in Johor. So Johor actually they have uh, quite. And quite numbers of uh, old buildings which actually can be uh, gazetted under Act 2005 but to this date there are only two buildings that has been gazetted under the Act which is uh, Masjid Sultan Abu Bakar in Johor Bahru and Bangunan Bukit Timbalan uh, in Johor Bahru as well. So th those are uh, the, the only two buildings that the department able to get consent from the state government of Johor. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there, there are many factors and, and I mean, there are many reasons on why actually the state government uh, 
uh, do not, uh, I mean, do not uh, give the consent uh, of this uh, gazettement. I mean, they, they have so many reasons which I I I, I cannot uh, say. I cannot uh, inform eh, all of you here. So this is the designation of national heritage. I think you can just have a look on what is the process eh, before we declare a site or uh, any intangible cultural heritage to be gazetted under Act 2005. Okay, this is a uh, do and don'ts. Once the uh, building uh, or any item uh, has been uh, get successfully gazetted under the Act 2005, then there are some a do and don'ts that uh, they have to follow. For example, any transaction relating to the heritage site should notify the commissioner, uh, should keep the heritage site in good repair. So owner may apply to the commissioner for any grant or loan for conservation and preservation works. And the uh, building owner should get approval in writing from the commissioner of heritage prior to any restoration, conservation, modification, demolition or construction works. And for example, if they want to do a conservation works, uh, okay, uh, for example, uh, previously we have an uh, application, I mean so many applications came in to the department. Uh, so those buildings that has been gazetted under the Act, Act 2005, Act 645, then if they want to do any uh, major repair works or they have they want to do any additional uh, buildings to that existing building so they should get approval in writing from their commissioner of heritage then they should conserve and preserve the heritage site according to the conservation management plan prepared by the heritage commissioner while do while don't Eh, under the don under section 112 so the owner must not dig construct excavate build plant trees quarry irrigate burn line or deposit earth or refuse on or in the heritage site or conservation area except uh, that they already have the uh, consent from the heritage commissioner so they cannot demolish, disturb, obstruct, modify, mark, pull down or remove any monument. So they cannot simply uh, remove the existing monument because it, it already uh, gazetted under the Act. So there, there, there is a, a protection to that particular uh, monuments or buildings. And they cannot erect any building or structure abutting upon a monument. Uh, destroy the relationship of a building and its environment that is incompatible with the character of the neighborhood. Clear any area or interfere with, destroy or remove any tree, plant, undergrowth, weed, grass or vegetation and do any activities or actions that would likely cause damage to the adjacent and surrounding land which have been registered as heritage site. So this section 112 actually is very important. So to all the students, uh, after this, you have an exercise uh, to do a proposal of the adaptive reuse of bangunan mahkamah perusahaan. So what you should do actually, you should refer to this section of what actually you can do and what actually you cannot do to that buildings in order to... Uh, comply with the uh, Act 645. So if uh, all the things that has been listed before uh, is not being followed by the owner, then they might be offence uh, by 50,000, 50K or five years imprisonment or both. This is under Section 112 and Section 114. Okay, so this is preservation and conservation of heritage site. I don't want to go in detail on this because it is very technical. Uh, but this just to show under section 40, actually section 40 is very important. 
eh, to those uh, heritage building owner when they want to do any uh, renovation eh, or amendments to that particular buildings. Okay. So this under section 40, the commissioner shall advise the local planning authority to impose condition when approving planning permission or development order involving a heritage site which may include uh, this item or this item. So this is just to show you uh, some example of our heritage site in Malaysia. And we have this uh, prominent heritage building which I think everyone uh, know eh, uh, about this building. This is Sultan Abdul Samad building uh, which located uh, in Kuala Lumpur just opposite the Merdeka Square, eh, Dataran Merdeka in Kuala Lumpur. And this is uh, an example of um, Chinese eclectic shop houses along Jalan Kampung China in Kuala Terengganu. And this is archaeological site of Lembah Bujang and this is the National Monument of Malaysia uh, which is Tugu Negara. And so uh, I'm sure you, some of you uh, have been, uh, I mean, visited this Tugu Negara. While for the heritage object which is tangible, so we have an inscribed stone of Terengganu, eh, Batu Besurat Terengganu, uh, Tengkolok. Eh, uh, and then we have the skeleton of Perak Man, uh, which now uh, being uh, exhibited in uh, Lenggong Gal Gallery Archaeology in Lenggong. And we have also the Malaysia's uh, Declaration of Independence. Uh, so, more on the heritage object, which is intangible under the Na National Heritage Act 2005. Uh, they also gazetted uh, a national dance, which is Mak Yong, uh, Silat. And uh, yes, uh, I did mention this to you uh, last week. So the department also gazetted Nasi Lemak eh, and also the uh, traditional games, which is Chongka. And many more, actually, you can see from the list. While for the underwater cultural heritage, we have uh, Tanjung Tuan in Malacca, uh, where actually we have, uh, I mean the department have found uh, many artifacts eh, from the from the, uh, uh, swimming and activity and archaeology excavation activities. And okay, this is a living person that, that I mentioned just now. Uh, so under the list, uh, the department have uh, Cik Gubaha, Cikgu Baha is a culture activities and Rami Ibrahim, a classical Indian dancer. I think he had passed away. And I Hot Sang, the puppet show performer and Mac Jah the Race for Mak Yong Prima Donna. So, and we have uh, some more. Eh? We have many more. So, then we go to the guideline on the conservation of heritage buildings. So, this is one. Okay, for... Our, in our country, actually, there are two uh, important documents that you should look into it, which is one of it is the Act 2005, Act 645. Then the other one is a guideline on the conservation of heritage building. So I'm sure everyone have a printed copy of these two documents. So please, please, please look into the uh, both document to have better understanding and uh, knowledge on the heritage conservation in Malaysia. Okay, uh, preparation of this guideline actually is referred to National Heritage Act 2005 and relevant international guidelines such as United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, and uh, many other chapters under International Council on Monuments and Site, ICOMOS, such as Bura Charter, Australia 1999, Charter for the Conservation of Places of Cultural Significance. So when the department uh, developed the guideline, actually they did refer to all the international heritage guidelines in order to ensure that what we 
do for our heritage building or heritage uh, elements in Malaysia actually is in line with what international guidelines uh, do. Okay, uh, so all activities and work related to heritage building conservation must follow a principle and procedure stated in the guideline. On top of that, a recommendation from JWN must be obtained before proceeding with any work. So this is for building conservation. Okay, and then there are, uh, I mean, this is the contents of the guideline. Okay, then just to highlight on the uh, needs of uh, a conservator. So a conservation work must be monitored and advised by a competent and experienced person in conservation field. And in each project, the appointed consultant and contractor must appoint a conservator under them. So the list of registered conservator can be obtained from JWN. So this conservator actually will help in giving advice on work method statement and a preparation of a required documentation. So this is again a photo of a top management team. So this is the former Ministry of Tourism and Culture uh, KSU, eh? KSU, Ketua Setiap uh, This is the Commissioner Heritage and also the uh, DG, Director of General of Heritage Department. So this is me here and these are all the registered conservator that has been listed by the department. Okay, this is just uh, a guideline for conservation work. So this is the one that uh, I remember last week, uh, there is one question about uh, should you actually uh, refer eh, to any guidelines or do you have any constraint eh, when you propose an adaptive reuse for that uh, mahkamah perusahaan. So this is the one that you should refer to. So please go into the uh, guideline for conservation work and have a look on what actually you can uh, do or what you shouldn't do eh, to the to that buildings when you do a when you do a conservation work. Eh, so this is a guideline for conservation work. Example of a conservation works for roof. Eh, how actually they are they carefully uh, works on that roof eh, in order to <coughs> preserve all the existing <coughs> roof tile. So they uh, open eh, uh, roof, the roof tile carefully and bring it down and they <coughs> clean it one by one, eh, each pieces of it with a manual cleaning. And those actually, uh, those tile which actually is still in a good condition, they will reuse it. Eh, while uh, for some uh, broken or damaged uh, roof tile, they have to find a replacement with a similar profile and the material. So this is just an example of some uh, heritage uh, roof tiles profile that can be found in National Heritage Building. So this is a mass sales. So mass sales is uh, normally you can see uh, printed at the, I mean, uh, at the bottom yeah, of the tile, uh, which stated where actually the tiles uh, came from. And this is the Sangora. Sangora is actually a local made uh, clay tile. Eh? Uh, so now actually uh, in Malaysia, uh, we still have one um, place that's still producing the Sangora tile in, Klan in Kelantan. Eh? So everything actually is uh, prepared using a manual process. And this is uh, the roof profile that can be found in most uh, old shop houses, either in Malacca or Penang. So uh, we call this as a V or U shape uh, roof clay tile. And okay, this is some photo uh, showing a traditional production of single ratal. Eh? So you see how actually uh, they produce the tile eh? using a manual process. Eh? They have to use their feet eh, to uh, put the clay eh, into the mold eh, and form it into a tile.
So this is the kiln that they use to burn the tile. Okay, so you can actually watch the uh, video eh, of this uh, Singora production from this uh, YouTube uh, link. Eh? So you just click it here and uh, you go to this uh, video showing the exciting process of uh, Singora tiles in Kelantan. Okay, this is conservation work for roof tile where actually during the conservation, uh, they apply of uh, water repellent to Singora tiles just to give uh, additional protection to the uh, tile surface. Okay, then this documentation, I think this has been highlighted in my previous lecture. So, I will not go through this uh, any, in this time. Okay, so you just uh, skip through. And so, this is uh, the last uh, part is actually some example of heritage building conservation, conservation projects by JWN in previous year. Uh, this is uh, uh, Istana Kenangan in Kuala Kangsa. So if you look at, <coughs> look at this picture, you can see how actually <coughs> during the conservation, <coughs> the temporary roofing uh, will be <coughs> put, eh, uh, I mean, around the building just to cover it. So, for example, this one, you look at this photo, they already open all the uh, tiles. Eh? Uh, the tile actually made from uh, what kayu belian. Eh? This is kayu belian. Uh, so, they open the tile uh, so that the roof actually will protect the building from any uh, weather disruption. And the, the work can be... Uh, I mean, can go on actually, uh, either in what whatever weather condition. This is a uh, conservation work in uh, Madrasah Idrisia, also in Kuala Kangsa. Uh, so how actually they do the wall treatment and the columns, yes, and this photo actually showing how actually they conserve uh, the uh, columns but they, they replace only certain parts of the, I mean, they, they replace only the damaged parts of the column, not all the columns. So you can uh, see the different, this is the, this is the, uh, what, the original, the existing column, and this, uh, the, at, on, at the below part, you can see the new replacement column. Okay, and this is the uh, conservation works for Masjid al in Banting. Also, they apply the temporary, temporary roofing. And this is the uh, work for the uh, wall surface. And this is for the paint analysis. So, they have to do six times, eh? six layer of paint analysis. Then, uh, only they get the original color of, of the building. Yeah, so here actually the the color is um, white eh? the original is white okay so this is the after conservation work this is before you can see the building is in yellow color but after the paint analysis has been done and uh, the analysis showed that the original color is white so the the team decided to turn it into the original color so they painted it white so this is the final uh, final finish uh, of the project this is inside the mosque and they actually uh, before the conservation all this uh, floor has been covered with a uh, carpet but they reveal it and they polish the the marbles. This is the all the original marbles, and this is a photo from conservation work of Masjid Negara in Kuala Lumpur. So this is the roof profile of Masjid Negara. Uh, previously, uh, there are so many uh, leaking and damage uh, to the roof, which causes. Uh, many problems to the interior space eh, of the mosque. Uh, so uh, the department advised the JKR to have a 
thorough conservation and repair works uh, by applying uh, waterproofing eh, to the or existing one uh, existing roof sorry and this is the conservation works in masjid sultan sulaiman in klang but this is for the uh, bus relief part where actually uh, before the conservation work started uh, all this uh, motif or we call this as a bus relief has been covered with a white cement but uh, during the conservation work the contractor uh, able to uh, remove the surface wall and uh, they, they managed to find eh, the original wall with a, a bus relief. So after that, we uh, did uh, many meetings and uh, we consult uh, the uh, Mufti Slango office as well just to ensure that all the motif is not uh, wrong eh, with the, our religion. And so the Sultan of Slango actually agreed to uh, reinstate eh, the bus relief. Okay, this is uh, the conservation work uh, for uh, bangunan pustak, uh, apa, uh, what is this? Uh, perpustakaan, not, not perpustakaan negara. Yeah, I can't remember the this work actually. Um, what is this? Uh, the, but this is the mural conservation, yeah, mural conservation. So actually, if you look at the, if you zoom in, all this mural actually made from this uh, one by one, yeah, one by one uh, mosaic, mosaic tiles. So you can just imagine uh, how tedious actually uh, the conservation works uh, because uh, before actually the mural being conserved, uh, some of the mosaic actually already uh, came off and the so we, so the con uh, project team has to find a way on how to replace it with the same original material and uh, retain eh, the original motif of the mural okay this is uh, during uh, our visit to the river of life project this is the grand staircase. I think I've been mentioned about this staircase as well in my previous lecture. So this is during the conservation works. And this is uh, of, uh, also during the conservation work. Okay, from top, uh, from top view. Okay. So I think uh, that is uh, all from me for this uh, lecture. So I hope uh, by hearing to this lecture, all of you uh, can can have a better knowledge and understanding on uh, what is actually the right approach uh, towards heritage building conservation project. And uh, when you actually implementing the conservation works, so you have you have to really look into the X and guideline in order to ensure that everything that you do for the project is actually in line with the uh, Act 645 and the guidelines for her, uh, build, heritage building conservation in Malaysia. So with that, uh, thank you very much.